This is about my book, Let a Smile Be Your Umbrella, but don't get a mouthful of rain. This is the year that's the 100th year anniversary of radio. And uh, what is it, the 20th year of my book, is it? This is the anniversary of Let a Smile Be Your Umbrella, uh, but don't get a mouthful of rain. And the reason that this came about is because I wanted to write a story that was not mean-spirited, that wasn't terrible about uh, other people who have made mistakes in life. I just wanted to talk about mine, not, not yours. You write your own book. <laughs> and it was dedicated to the memory of Tom Chauvin, who was radio's unsung hero and mine. He was the most wonderful friend. And he uh, he he was, uh, I could do a book on Tom Chauvin. I, I, I have his writings from when he was the editor of Pulse Magazine and the publisher of that with Bob Silliman became a big, big shot in, in radio and television. He was partners formerly with cousin Bruce Morrow. That's a whole long story. That's a whole nother book. But let's talk about this one here. Uh, I, I love the idea that I was able to put together my my uh, childhood without being mean-spirited. And, and I put out a disc about, uh, oh, I don't know how many years ago, my sister's telling my childhood story. And it matches, which <laughs> usually the way I see, I see things is not the way someone else sees them. Uh, this is a great preface, as the as a, as the spiritual, the old spiritual goes. Uh, this is this is the the preface now. As as the old spiritual goes, I once was lost, but now I'm found, and I got a lot of people to thank for finding me too. Including, am I tweeting? Is that a tweet in the background? I, I can't tweet during this whole thing. First of all, it's good to be found at WOR, that 710 AM dial in New York City. Since its inception, WOR has been continuously broadcasting the same format, talk radio, and doing so longer. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing this longer than any other, any other station in America, although they didn't invent, did not invent talk radio. I've come to believe that uh, WOR stands for the world's oldest radio. And uh, at one time, I thought they needed to hire some black people, and I said, this is white-only radio. I got in trouble with that one. I am particularly grateful to David Bernstein, WOR's program director, who had the good sense and gumption to hire me when one of his bosses, the general manager, Bob Bruno, was out sick, and the other, Buckley Broadcasting President Rick Buckley, was away on vacation. Now, since I had worked for Rick twice before, he fired me the first time, I quit the second. We got even. I'm also grateful, I'm grateful for him to, for, for not kicking me back out on my butt as soon as he saw me behind the mic. <laughs> you know what they say, Rick, third time's a charm. <laughs> so David Bernstein, uh, he helped to persuade him that I'd, I'd, I would not only keep the ears of older listeners, but bring in some younger listeners too, and uh, essentially babysit America on a network show. I'd also like to thank some good friends who kept me going through the years. Claude Hall, who now passed, former editor of Billboard, uh, foremost friend and confidant. Bob Crew, who with the Four Seasons created my jingle, which is Big Girls Don't Cry. And uh, and I had a great career with the Four Seasons. I'm the guy who, who uh, played the record for four hours at WPOP in Hartford when Morton Donnie was program director. Seymour, St and, and made the record a hit. Seymour Stein and Ron Alexenberg, who fed my career and my ego till I weighed well over 300 pounds. Wally Clark and Jeff Rich, the guys at Radio Today who perked up many of my yesterdays. Barry Bergman, music promoter, publisher, and my, my longtime friend. He's my oldest friend in every way. <laughs> and Gertie Hoffman, who helped me buy my first car. It was a 1960 Buick convertible when I was in Ashland, Ohio. Hartford Station Manager Charlie Parker gave me permission to be successful, also broadcast from the elevator and did a lot of things. Charlie and I were great together. He was a marketing genius and and crazy, and, and I, I fit him perfectly. Uh, so John Pasco, my roommate at NYU, uh, John Antoon, whose friendship made sobering up a little less dry. Uh, he and I got sober together in uh, in L.A., uh, Dick Robinson, head of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, has always been there to teach me a thing or two. I was the first uh, speaker at his class when he started the school, and he said he would never have me speak there again because I was telling kids they wasted their money. <laughs> off to a good, off to a good start with uh, the biggest uh, uh, radio school in the history of radio. I think so. I think they became the best. And Russ Oasis, who uh, uh, t taught me a thing or two, you know. Uh, 
he's made stations bloom and broadcasting his barons. What he did was he punished people uh, by by uh, having an advertising agency. They had to go after him because they wanted to have the ads and his money. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he was a good friend. And oh yeah, uh, I got to talk about Dr. James Chenitz, who's a dentist. He helped my wife and me after I lost my job at WNBC. Lou Yeager, who passed away, also put me on track after a high-speed derailment. Uh, Jeff Duvall, who helped me cook up my cheesecake company. Eileen, the cheesecake queen. She's still on Lafayette Street in, in New York. David Fisher, uh, head of uh, Bloomingdale's, and Rosemary uh, Ganascoli, who makes sales bloom at Bloomies. Uh, Elena, my first producer at WOR, was so, so much helped me. She and, and uh, uh, I, I can't thank her enough. She got me going and uh, she and I had a little bit of a falling out of her money, but she's just great. And uh, I owe her big time. Kenny Kramer, the original Kramer, who makes reality more fun to tour. And I lived with him, you know, the real Kramer and, uh, and his subsequent friend, uh, Larry David. M Myra Channon. Mother Wonderful, oh my God, my producer for years, and uh, she became, she was started out as a, a cheesecake maker, a wonderful guest, and I uh, was given the cheesecake recipe. We did a cheesecake book together. Bikram Chartere, the yoga master who keeps me limber. Now I've had, what is it, 30 years of Bikram yoga? Five days a week I was doing it until I had my knee replacements. But you know, he was the best, the best, absolutely, and his, uh, his flow is still being practiced by everybody. They do a shorter version of it now, but he he had he had it figured out. He just went a little bit crazy with women, and uh, he got uh, in trouble. Joyce Keller, psychic and sidekick. Mickey Freeman, who's a stand-up comic and uh, and a stand-up friend. Sid Bernstein, the legendary music producer, and, and uh, he he brought me. Oh, I mean, I can't tell you how many things I learned from him. And uh, uh, he brought the Beatles to uh, to Shea Stadium, Carnegie Hall, and the art of fine dining to my table. <laughs> Robert Fleischer, who chronicled my career, he chronicled my career in pictures from when I did the very first satellite show in the world, and Robert was there every week and took pictures. I have all those photos. Also, he did the cover of my cheesecake, which was a projection of where he thought I belonged, which is in a space suit in Times Square. And Art Vola, who chronicled my career, and he still has all these tapes, so I better be kind about him, or he'll go state's witness on me. As well as the careers of many broadcast giants, and speaking of broadcasting giants, there's Super Sales, my friend and my mentor. And he also, uh, I even escorted him to get the star on the sidewalk of, uh, in Hollywood. And you know who helped with that? Was a guy named Shotgun Tom Kelly, who now has a star in the sidewalk. And Jack Popejoy, who was at KFWB, and I worked with him in Philly. He was a great guy. And uh, you know, these are these are all wonderful people. My gratitude also goes out to Les Paul, whose vision and inventions have helped shape the 20th century music. About three years ago, I got on the air and read a bit of misinformation. Uh, did you hear I said Les Paul died? Ten minutes later, I got a call from the deceased. He sent me straight and then wanted to know who the hell I was. I told him I was a renowned DJ. He said he never heard of me. And uh, he came in to the station one night in the middle of the night. And uh, to prove my obscurity, he brought a bunch of volumes of who's who in radio and broadcasting down to the station. Dumped them on my desk and said, you're not in any of them. You're the one who doesn't exist. He stood there waiting an explanation for I wasn't in those books. And I said, because I never took payola. Even Dick Clark was a, before Congress with that. And um, Les and I have been buddies ever since. I finally figured out how to get my name in a book by writing one. This is it. <laughs> I'd like to thank Heather Uglevy. Uh She uh, she diverted my stream of consciousness into the pools of prose. And uh, this is in 1999, December. Uh, let us smile over your umbrella and get a mouthful of rain. They say a lot of things, and uh, I've said a lot of things, and you know, talk is cheap, but not not if you listen to the people who are broadcasting. They think it's very expensive. <laughs> All right, so my book, Let Us My Beer Umbrella Don't Get a Mouthful of Rain, that's just the preface. I'm gonna read one chapter from it, I think every week, and we're gonna put it on the uh, podcast, so you'll be able to have my book. I'm gonna do an audio book. This time, though, I'm going to ad lib with the audiobook. I don't think anyone's ever done that. And I'm uh, 
so grateful to Frank Minishak for making all this happen. He's my longtime friend and yoga partner too. We started together in Western Florida years ago. Frank's a, he's a, a under the radar genius. So it's a Reynolds wrap.